Hello there ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a somewhat experimental video. So you know when there's a new, like, stock ROM that comes out and you're currently on a custom ROM and you want to update the custom ROM, but before you update the custom ROM you need to flash the stock ROM twice. <laughs> so yeah, and then after that you need to flash the custom ROM again. So I was thinking, hmm, this takes like a lot of time you know you're basically flashing like roms three times so i was wondering if it's possible to do all of this in one go so i did some tests i wrote some scripts and uh, it turns out that well from my testing at least it is possible so i managed to flash the updated stock images and the updated uh, Havoc images all in one go while keeping data and like all that stuff so you can even do this if you have like Google accounts made, fingerprint, you don't need to like remove any of that. So for this demonstration I'll be using Havoc OS and as you can see I have a fingerprint here and all that kind of stuff so I actually just booted this up so that way that's why that comes up but yeah, I have like fingerprint and all that kind of good stuff. And all my data is like, you know, here. So I'm not gonna wipe this. And by the end of this video, we should have a fully updated Avoc OS with the fully updated stock images. Uh, and basically all the data will be intact and stuff like that. Now there is a bit of setup involved with running this script. Um, I can automate most of this, but um, for this version at least, you're gonna have to do some stuff manually. So the first thing you wanna do is grab your latest firmware. So in my case, I'll be using this one. And you wanna grab your latest uh, custom ROM now I'll be using Havoc OS. Uh, the script will technically work for OmniRAM as well, but you will have to flash TWRP also, which I didn't include in the script because uh, Havoc OS includes TWRP, but you can easily include it as well. It'll just be a few more lines of code. Um, so after we downloaded both of those ROMs, we are actually gonna need to extract the images from them. So this is an example, Havoc OS here. If we open it up, you'll see here we have a payload.bin file. So we need to extract that and we will need to use payload dumper. So I've done a video on payload dumper in the past, but if you aren't familiar, uh, you basically download, download it like a zip file, you extract the zip. Now I'm doing all of this inside this folder here, exp1. And so I just extract the payload dumper, I extracted it to the Havoc folder. And you'll also need to extract it because we'll be doing the same thing with the images, with the Asus stock ROM images. So once you've done that, uh, put your payload.bin inside here and then open up a terminal inside your inside this folder basically oops and then it's just simply as running i'll increase the size of this so you boys can see it's simply just as running payload uh, dumper py and then your payload dot bin file press enter and it will extract all the boot images or all the images these will end up inside your output folder so for the havoc os we only have four but if we go into the so this is the payload that bin for the stock rom it's exactly the same thing but for the stock rom we have a bunch of more images so the reason havoc os doesn't include all of these is, well, first of all, to keep the size of the ROM like smaller. And second of all, because most of these are like proprietary code by ASUS. So I think it would be illegal for Havoc to even include them. 
so that is why we need to flash uh, twice. But with my script, what it will do is it will flash all of the necessary images from the Asus uh, ROM. So for example, it won't flash the VB meta, it won't flash the system, and it won't flash the boot image. Now, this is because Havoc OS has these images and there is no point in flashing the stock ones because once we flash Havoc OS ones, they will overwrite the stock ones. And also not flash these saves on time since in particular the system image, it's five gigabytes. So sending that to your phone takes a while, flashing it takes a while. And so, yeah. Anyway, to get this working, you just need to extract, like I showed you, the Havoc images and then the stock ROM images, and then create a scripts folder wherever you want. Uh, be easier if it's like kind of beside these two. But in here, just download this script that I made. It's on GitHub. You could just uh, copy and paste the code from there, save it into an SH file or whatever, or clone it if you wanted to. And then copy your Magisk and your kernel file inside the same folder as well. Now you don't have to do this, but like when I'm updating Havoc, I usually flash Magisk after as well, since a lot of my apps use Magisk. And that is why my script, when you run it, there's an option to flash everything and it will flash Magisk after it flashes the stock images as well. So that is handy. You can just like, you know, leave the script running and then walk away from your computer. So then what you want to do is open up your scripts folder, your, the script that you downloaded. Uh, I already have it opened here. And what you want to do is head over to the top. And here there is some values that you need to fill out. So it's just these uh, five values here. First one is the Magisk name. So just copy whatever name you have in here. Next is the kernel name, copy whatever name you have in here. If you don't want to use, if you aren't going to flash the kernel, you could just leave it blank. Um, and that should work as well. The scripts folder is basically this folder here. So just copy that into here. The Asus images folder. This is the folder where all of your images are. So this is the payload dumper output folder. So copy that. And then it's the same thing for the Havoc. So that would be the Havoc payload dumper and then the output. So I just copy this folder name here. This is so that the script uh, knows where the images are basically. And then that's it. That's all you need to change in the script. To run the script, you just do uh, sudo. Well, you don't have to do sudo, but uh, in my system you do. So, rog payload dumper flasher. And then uh, before we do that, on the phone, make sure you enable USB debugging. So, it should be on here. Like so, when you plug it in, this is just because some of my scripts or some of the stuff inside the script uses ADB. And so once that's done, you could just leave the phone here and we can move on to the script. So you can see here, I will make this larger. Cause why not? And so you'll see you have a bunch of different options here. The option that we are going to use is the flash everything and Magisk, which will flash the stock images, the Havoc images and Magisk. But before we do that, we need to reboot to fastboot. So just press two on your keyboard, uh, press enter, and you should see your phone rebooting to fastboot. And then the script will also detect uh, when the phone is rebooted to fastboot fully and the menu will come up again, like so. And then as you can see, once we're in fastboot, you get a little bit of info here. So we're in fastboot mode and our current slot is A. So you can, for example, there's an option here to switch slots. 
you can switch the slot to B, but in this case it doesn't really matter because my script flashes to both of the slots at the same time, which means that you'll have the latest version of Havoc and all the stock images on the both slots, which is pretty good. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we are gonna run number eight, flash everything and magisk. So this will ask, are you sure you want to do this? Because just in case you accidentally misclicked, you don't wanna, you know, flash everything, for example. So that's why I put this in, but you can press no if you aren't sure, you'll go back to the menu. By the way, if you don't see anything in the menu, just press enter and it will give you all the options, which is pretty cool. So yeah, anyway, we'll go into back into eight, flash everything at magisk, and then we'll press Y and it will start flashing all of the images that I mentioned earlier on. So you can see them here, we're flashing, for example, well, they're going a bit fast. <laughs> but yeah, you can see key master to A slot, key master to B slot. So that's what that means. So the image name is actually like all of this before the underscore, and then after the underscore is like, which slot do you wanna flash it to? So yeah, this takes a while to run because the images are like fairly big, but it's a lot faster than, you know, doing it the old traditional way. And it's a lot less involved as well, since you can literally just leave your computer running, come back, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, 20 minutes later, maybe 10 minutes later, and your phone will be like already all up to date. Now, if you are using TW, if you are using a like lock screen password or whatever, when this script reboots to TWRP, you will still have to put in the password, obviously, but the script will wait for you to put in the password. So, you know, there's no big deal or whatever. So yeah, after all this is done flashing, I'll do a quick walk through, through the script. So I made it as kind of easy as possible to use or to edit. So that way, if you know, if you want to support like, I don't know, other devices, you can like edit the script a little bit and it'll work nicely. And if you want to add TWRP into the mix, you can also do that quite easily. I might actually do it myself after the next release. So, cause I, a lot of people are using Omniram and that doesn't come pre-installed or that doesn't come installed with uh, TWRP, which is fine. You know, keeping things like, you know, as stock as possible is good too as well. So yeah, while all this is flashing, you might be thinking, oh, there's nothing happening on my phone. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Like when you're in fast boot, there is really no output or anything like that. So all the output is just in the terminal there. Now also another thing is at the moment the script only runs on um, Linux. <laughs> this is because I don't know how to make batch files. Like if you look at batch files, it's like Egyptian hieroglyphics compared to bash scripting. But I'm pretty sure it is possible, like I'm 90% sure it's possible to run bash scripts on Windows because Windows introduced like their Linux subsystem or some, I don't know, I never tried the but um, I'll look into it when I have free time and uh, if I can manage to get it working or I will make an updated video so that way you guys can run this script on uh, Windows as well or if somebody out there knows how to write batch scripts properly, you can like look at how this script is written and then just do the same thing but for batch scripts or whatever, but that will be like super <laughs> hard by the looks of how batch scripts are structured, so yeah. Just use Linux like, it's, it's so much easier. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I kind of didn't notice, but as you can see we finished flashing the stock images and now we're flashing the Havoc images. So this is the boot, the DBO, the system. Now, since the system is quite big, like five gigabytes or so, uncompressed, um, or is it five gigabytes? I'll actually check here. Yeah, so it's four and a half gigabytes, which is all right. 
that'll take a while so as you can see it's doing like oops it's doing like s steps so step one out of six step two out of six so it's sending like uh, I think it's like 500 megabytes each time so yeah so that'll be about right so that'll be see 500 one gigabyte one gigabyte 500 two gigabytes oh no maybe more I don't know doesn't matter <laughs> tis grand yeah so it'll do the same thing for the B slot as well so it'll take a while to flash that too but this way it's handy because if you ever I don't know mess up your havoc somehow you can switch to the other slot and theoretically your havoc should still be working on that slot anyway so unless you messed up something like really badly <laughs> then they'll be fucked but yeah all right so there we go flash all the images and since we selected flash magic as well it's gonna try to reboot into recovery now the reason it sort of looks like it's rebooting into DAOS, that is because it is. <laughs> now this is because I could not for the life of me figure out how to reboot to recovery from fastboot, which doesn't make any sense, but the only way I figured out how to do it is rebooting using ADB. So this is why it is rebooting to OS and then from the OS it is rebooting to recovery. Now the good thing about ADB is that it actually loads before the OS so like you don't need to load the OS fully to use ADB commands which is pretty cool. So anyway, here you can see it is waiting for TWRP and this is because we have a password set. So I'm just gonna type in my password. So after you type in your password uh, this should detect automatically that we're inside TWRP and it will start flashing Magisk straight away. So there we go, detected we're inside TWRP. It's gonna upload the Magisk zip and then it's gonna flash the Magisk zip. And this is basically will be the same procedure for custom kernel and all that kind of good stuff. All right, and now it's gonna reboot to our operating system. So everything is done, Magisk is flashed, we're in ADB mode, and we should boot back into our OS, and we'll be on the latest uh, stock images with the latest Havoc images, <laughs> and the latest and also magisk will be flashed so as you can see that is very easy all in one go so yeah i'll just show you what's up so i'll enter my pin as you can see all of our data is still intact all of our apps are still there everything is still there even our fingerprint works and all that kind of good stuff so first of all we'll check out magisk to see if magisk works as you can see it does. Does it pass safety net? It should. And it does. And then we can head over to the settings. Android 10. And as you can see we are updated to the latest Havoc. Now you can't really see the build number properly so I'll read it out. It's QQ2A.200501.0. So yeah, we're on the latest Havoc and whatnot. So anyway, the other stuff available in the script is just rebooting to other stuff, switching slots, flashing Magisk, this... Um, yeah, so for example, if I run flash Magisk, it's gonna reboot to recovery. So it doesn't matter if you're in uh, basically inside your OS or if you're inside fastboot it will reboot to recovery either way and so the other options are flash kernel which basically does the same thing and then all these options are like what we looked at before yeah so we can enter our pin again here and then the script will detect after a while that twrp is awake and active 
and then it'll do the same thing like it did before. Upload Magisk and then install it. Now the reason we're doing an upload, uh, this is because of less interaction. I'll show you what I mean later. So normally, you know the way you can sideload. Yeah, so you can see if Magisk flashed. So anyway, what I was saying is normally to sideload in TWRP, you actually need to go into advanced and sideload which requires user interaction, which I wanted to minimize. And so by uploading the file, you basically don't need the user to interact with TWP in any way possible, apart from typing in the password, which is pretty cool. But anyway, once you're here, you can reboot to OS, for example, and so on. And then to exit, you can either do control C or you can type 10, whichever one you feel like. So while the phone is booting in here, I will go through the script a little bit so that you guys like know what's the story. So I explained all these earlier on, basically change these to whatever you want. Uh, this variable, don't do anything with it. It just stores which, uh, slot you're on so I'm on a right now so when this will get updated to a basically whatever <laughs> uh, wait for fast boot this does a loop so after you reboot to fast boot you would run this command and it will see if fast boot devices produces anything and if it doesn't it'll sleep for five seconds and keep looping uh, update current slot is just basically updating this to whatever current slot you're on. What it does is it gets OAM device info, saves it to a file, and then we look at that file through various shell commands. And then we figure out which slot it is. Now check if in fastboot, this is the same thing as wait in fastboot, but it doesn't loop. So if we are in fastboot, it just returns yeah. If we're not, then we presume we're in ADB or somewhere else. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, check if unlocked. This checks if your device is unlocked, again, by running the OEM info. And then if your device is locked, it will exit the script because you can't flash stuff while your device is locked, you know. Uh, header, don't worry about this. This is actually the... This is this at the bottom, so the header generates this text. So that way you know if you're in ADB mode, if you are in uh, fast boot mode or whatever. <laughs> so it'll, it'll also show what uh, slot you're on as well, so that way you always know, you know. Then confirm, this is just kind of verifying stuff, so uh, do you want to continue? Yes, no, it's actually used here. So big text and then if we click no, then it's just gonna exit the script or whatever in this case. This just checks if these if these files and names are legitimate. So if this is a directory and if this is a file, for example, so if you named them properly, if you didn't, there'll be a warning. So I'll actually show you. So if I accidentally renamed my scripts to scripts A, and then if I ran this, you will see here scripts folder is not correct. This might cause serious issues down the line. Are you sure you want to continue? So if you press no, it'll just exit the script. And then if you press yeah, you'll get launched. Or it'll also, <laughs> because I changed the script's name, it'll see that the magisk file is not there and that the kernel file is not there as well. But anyway, if you click yes to all of them, you can still do the stuff, but for example, flashing magisk right now wouldn't work. And uh, yeah, so that's why you just have to be careful when naming the stuff. So that's why I put in the check. So I will change that back. All right, so next thing, 
So these are kind of the helper functions, I call this. So I, I put in the functions like in its own setting or its own section. So that way you guys can figure what the hell these do easily. <laughs> and then the rebooting functions. These are self-explanatory, reboot to recovery, wait for TWRP to become active. Uh, this just checks if um, the ADB state is uh, not... Like if the ADB state exists, basically, because um, if you boot into, if you try running this too early, the ADB state will produce an error, which will tell Bash that the exit code of this command is like one or something, but we need it to be zero, which means this command ran fine, and so we just check. We just check if the command exited okay. If then we wait five seconds and then we check again, we loop again, see if this command this time exited okay. And if it did, then we exit the loop and we are inside TWRP. So here's where all the kind of functions come in together. So reboot TWRP, we check if we're in fast boot. And if we are in fast boot, we will reboot to recovery, wait for TWRP. And then we can we can tell the user that we're inside TWRP, and then we return from the script. If we are not in fast boot, we are in ADB basically. So we will echo. We will tell the user that we're waiting for our ADB device, and then this function waits for the ADB device. Basically loops, and then once this function detects that we're in ADB device, it re it exits. And then we echo we're rebooting to recovery and then we do ADB reboot to recovery. And then we wait for TWRP and once the user types in the password or TWRP just opens up since there is no need for password, <laughs> it echo, it tells the user we're inside TWRP and it returns from the function as well. So reboot phone is basically sort of the same thing. So we check if we're in fast boot. If we are, we run a fast boot command fastboot re reboot and then we return from this function and then if we are in ADB so if we are not in fastboot then we just ADB reboot and exit as well and then the reboot to fastboot is sort of the same thing as this like pretty much exactly the same thing except we just change the command to fastboot reboot bootloader and then we wait for a fastboot and all that kind of good stuff so that's all the rebooting functions Next is the flashing functions. Now this function will flash all of our stock ROM images. So as you can see, it changes the directory to our stock ROM images folder. So this basically does a CD into media, 2T, two, two terabyte SSD, blah, 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 inside here. And since all of the functions are there, or all these images are there, it'll start booting them up. So as you can see here, for each, um, what you call it, for each partition or for each image, there is an A and B. So what this means is flash this image to A of this partition. And then here it's flash this image to B of this partition. So the partition names are the same as the image names. So you can see AOP and then AOP here. Now you'll see here that I commented out uh, fast boot boot or flash boot A. Now this is because Havoc has its own boot image. So that's why we don't need to flash the stock boot image. So first of all, it saves us time. And second of all, it's unnecessary since the the Havoc um, boot image is going to overwrite this boot image. But if you wanted to flash stock, like only stock, you can edit this function or create a new function and then just uncomment this out, these two lines out and whatnot. So you can see there's four uh, images commented out. That's because Havoc has them. So. Speaking of Havoc, here's the flash all Havoc functions. So we can see we flash the boot image, DBO, 
uh, system image and then the VB meta image. Then the flash match disk function, just flash when you're inside TWRP, it will just flash, it will push the Magisk uh, file into the temporary directory of the phone and then it will run an ADB shell TWRP install. So TWRP install is actually the command. You can actually do this command from inside TWRP if you go to their um, terminal basically. So yeah. And then we just delete the Havoc or the Magisk image that we pushed earlier on kernel is is exactly the same and then flash everything including magisk so this is where all the kind of functions come together we check if it's unlocked check if the phone is unlocked so that was way up there and then flash all stock images flash all havoc images reboot to twrp then we flash magisk flash kernel so as you can see the functions here we call them here and then we do an adb reboot since right now we're inside we can actually call a uh, reboot to OS. So this function here, where is it? Yeah, reboot phone, we can actually call that. But since we are certain that we are in ADB because TWRP is like an ADB basically <laughs> when uh, after you flash all the stuff. Uh, same from here. This is actually the function that we ran for the, for the guide or for the demonstration. So checked is unlocked. My device is obviously unlocked, so that did nothing and then we flashed all the stock images as you saw there flashed all the havoc images then we rebooted to DWRP we entered our password and then the flash magisk function got called and then our phone was rebooted and then flash all ROM this is the same thing but it doesn't flash um, magisk or TWRP or a kernel or whatever and then this is the menu flash magisk so this is basically uh i'll show you guys the menu later on but this is what sh what function gets called when you press number five on the keyboard and this reboots to twrp and then after we inside twrp after we enter our password it will flash magisk and just kind of stay there i could put in uh, adb reboot here as well but there's kind of no need really. <laughs> you can just press like one on your keyboard or whatever. And then same thing for the kernel. So that's kind of the flashing functions, all of the flashing functions. Uh, you, if you're using Omni, you might have to, you'll have to create a flash TWRP function here since uh, Omni is come pre-installed with TWRP. So anyway, onto our miscellaneous functions. We have a swap slot function so this checks if what slot you're on right now if it's a we will set active to B if it's B we will set active to a and then we will reboot back to the bootloader and then we'll just wait for fast boot to become active again and then this is the menu functions this is what you see on the screen so don't worry about all these the options are just like the text that comes up and then for each option here's the appropriate commands that we do so you can see a uh, usage of uh, confirm do you want to switch slots and then if you press yes the swap slot function will run and then here is what we ran so whatever this is number eight i think or some sh something like that so you'll remember that we uh, we were asked to run this and then we said yes and we ran it and then quit as well at the bottom so that just kind of breaks the loop here and then so here at the bottom is first of all we are checking if the folders exists and then you get some um what you call it you get some warnings or whatnot and then after that we launch the menu function so you see the menu on the screen then and this menu kind of loops uh, forever until you close the program or whatnot. Now, if you didn't want to use the menu, you can do this manually, of course. So just comment out the menu. And then I put in some examples here. So you can uncomment these out. Check if unlocked, flash stock images, flash 
uh, Havoc images, then whatnot, reboot TWP, Flash Magisk, and all that kind of good stuff. But that's kind of all the stuff that's in the menu. But if you're editing the script, you know, this is handy to test your stuff. So I'll just come without that again. So yeah, that's it. Uh, the script will be available on GitHub. I will try and update it as much as possible. Uh, for my needs at least anyway, or if you guys want any features added to the script, uh, let me know in the comments, let me know on my telegram channel or whatever. And so yeah, uh, thanks for watching and bye bye.